Hi there, um, Steve here. I'm going to uh, be demonstrating uh, the SharePoint migration tool today. Um, in this demo, I'm going to take files from a file server location and then upload them into a SharePoint library. And we'll walk through some of the settings of the SharePoint migration tool uh, that you'll find useful later. So the first thing we do is we go to uh, probably Google and just download uh, Google SharePoint migration tool and download the tool onto the local computer. Once uh, you've done that, uh, you log into the migration tool, entering in your Office 365 credentials, uh, and then you're ready to start your migration. So click the Start Your First Migration button. That takes us into the migration tool um, content selection screen. So on the screen here, we can choose from an existing SharePoint 2013 source, uh, document library or list, uh, or we can choose from file server or do a bulk import using an import file. So for the first round here, what we'll do is we'll use the file share import. Now in the background here, I'll just show you a couple of things before we start. So first one is my source file location. So in this case, I've just created a test folder on my C drive. Um, I've got a couple of folders, subfolders on here and a few documents. If I go into the subfolder, you'll see there's a group of documents in there. Uh, and in the empty folder, it's empty. At the same time, I've also got a SharePoint site. This SharePoint site here has a document library that's simply called Migration. Uh, you could, this could be any document library and we're going to move our content into there. So back in the migration tool, choose the file share option. And the first thing we want to do here is choose the location of the folder. So I'm just going to browse to my folder, uh, which in this case is going to be on my local computer, uh, on my C drive and down here in my test folder. So choose my file path, hit next, and then my SharePoint server location. So in this case, my site is called um, uh, SharePoint um, sites slash uh, demo team site uh, and I'm just going to choose that hit next what that will do is populate the list of document libraries for me to choose from uh, just give that a moment <clears throat> the first time we do this takes a wee bit longer than if you do it for subsequent options this gives me a list of document libraries I can choose from so in here what I'm going to do is just basically choose my migration library so this is my source library location here and then hit next now what it's doing here is going to give me a name of my migration, my source and my destination, uh, and the name of the migration up here. So I can call it uh, test migration if I want to. Um, I can click back in here and add an additional file source if I want to, which allows me to add multiple document, uh, multiple folders on my network drive to different locations on SharePoint. So if I had three folders and wanted them to go to three separate libraries, I'd just create three separate um, sources here. I can either choose to do this now or save for later, so I'm just going to choose this to do it now, so I hit next. Um, and here I have uh, the settings screen. So if I go with the default basic settings, um, then it's a pretty sensible defaults. Um, it only performs a pre-scan, um, it preserves any, sh uh, doesn't preserve any file share permissions, so it, uh, the documents themselves, when they loaded into SharePoint, inherit the permissions configured in SharePoint, rather than any existing NTFS permissions that might be on the file server. Um, I can also tell it whether I want to migrate the version history of the file um, or and also whether I want to do an active directory lookup to see whether the user uh, whether the user account for the person that's created the file on the local server uh, can be matched with their Office 365's directory or um, Azure Active Directory um, <coughs> so that they preserve things like they're created by user or a modified user of that item. I click into advanced here, I can also do a few other things in here so you'll see uh, a bunch of settings such as um, creating user mappings, um, filtering out versions, doing by date range, um, and other um, other things. So the ability to actually go back and say, just migrate documents created uh, within the last two years, for example, can be done simply by selecting the date range in here. Now, when I save those settings, what that does is it actually, I can save those into an XML file um, and then reuse that file later on. Sorry, JSON file, sorry. If I uh, click Migrate, uh, then the migration process starts. So what this is going to do now is do a background check to see, uh, make sure everything is happy, um, and then copy the files up. So the first time I do this, it does take a moment. This is provisioning some storage um, in the cloud, uh, temporary storage for my files and so on, um, and then it will start the migration process itself. So you'll see here it's going to migrate uh, six files, um, and then it's going to give me an idea down here of how much capacity is required for those files. Um, and it will generate a report with any um, issues and so on as well. 
Um, while it's doing that, we'll talk a wee bit about a few of the common problems that you might strike. Um, the first one that you usually strike uh, that's that you could strike is a file with a file name that's not supported in SharePoint Online. So, for example, having a tilde symbol, um, which you might find on a temporary file in, the, like, in a folder, um, such as a word temp file, for example, um, those uh, documents won't upload because the URLs don't match and therefore um, it can't be migrated. Now that went pretty quickly as you can see, it's, it's saying it's completed the migration, six files, and it's telling us the size of the file. We can also view the report here, um, which will give me, uh, gives me a couple of CSV files I can look at um, to have a wee um, view of the output, so I can save those if I want to. But if we click, let's click into SharePoint. Inside SharePoint you'll see now we've got our folder structure. If you remember before we had um, the same folders here, so we've got the empty folder, the subfolder, and the documents. So if I go into subfolder, you'll see in here it's got the matching items. Now in my demo environment I don't have um, active, um, uh, Azure Active Directory Sync connected, so I don't see the users mapping through. However, if I uh, did have um, AD Connect configured, then um, it should match up the users using their um, user IDs between the on-prem and the cloud environment. So that's um, a very quick way to, to do things. If I just zip back into here for one more thing, I can go save that migration before closing. Um, if I then start the migration again, uh, basically what will happen here is I can then go and choose a file. Um, I can choose my file um, in here. And in fact, if I have the right file location, I can choose the file. Um, but I can pick up that file from my previous um, backup, or I can view a sample file. Um, and this sample file here will just help me with creating, um, manually creating the file beforehand. So in here I can do things uh, such as um, uh, defining the columns for the different source and target locations and so on. And here's the file format to use uh, to build your own um, upload file, which is great if you're wanting to do large numbers of files, uh, map large numbers of folders on a file server to different SharePoint document library locations. Um, so that's pretty much um, uh, all you need to know to get yourself started with the migration tool. Uh, the tool itself is free. Um, your user account that's running it will need to be a site collection administrator in the SharePoint site uh, in order to be able to upload files. Um, you can also use it to migrate content from existing SharePoint 2013 on-prem environments to the cloud as well. So um, quite useful for um, the common sorts of migrations you'd be interested in doing. Okay, hopefully that's been helpful um, and we'll talk to you again soon.